Hey, it's Ink Mage here with another sneak preview of an upcoming miniatures line by WizKids. Fangs and talons, I think you're going to love what I've got to show you. And here are some minis from the upcoming WizKids Fangs and Talons set. Got a few nice minis here to show you, including the premium figure, the purple worm. Now this is just a broad view, but we're gonna go in and take a closer look. Uh, based on these minis, I can tell you that this is one of the best series they've produced yet. So this first mini is kind of a throwback retro figure in Al Mirage. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Sort of a rabbit with its ears cast down and a unicorn horn. This is a throwback creature to, um, at least the first time I encountered it, is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. It was either in the Monster Manual 2 or the Fiend Folio. I, I can't be certain, it's been a while, but uh, AD&D First Edition was my intro into the game, and I really appreciate that they've done this uh, kind of retro throwback mini. And speaking of retro throwback, this is a Kirin. Now, I've never used this creature in any of my games, but this goes back to, I believe, again, the Fiend Folio for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I'll, I'll make a point to use it now, but it could very well be that it's just great for some people for the total throwback retro appreciation of it and it is on a clear base, which I love, and this sturdy mounting system. This is a very, very cool mini, sort of a celestial uh, being, I believe. Look at the wild, gorgeous mane. <laughs> it's just a cool mini. Here we have an air elemental and an earth elemental. One of the cool things, one of the very cool things that WizKids is doing is making the minis look as they do in the Monster Manual. I appreciate that. And look at, look at the clear base. Again, why is the clear base so cool? Look at that. I can see through to the terrain below and I love that. I love that. So let's, we'll turn these, these guys around so you can get kind of a back view. And again, WizKids is really killing it with their detail and their paint jobs. Here we have a giant wolf spider. And this one is leaping again. It has a very sturdy uh, mounting base. So he's not, this spider is not going to break off from it. It's very secure. Nice paint job, a terrifying lunge as it leaps at you, and look at the cluster of eyes. Always good to have spiders in your collection to throw at your players. Here we have a Burbalang. You know, what is this guy? Is he like a is he a fiend? He looks like a fiend with either a white goatee or perhaps a fang coming off his, his chin. I haven't really used Burblangs, but this guy could be used for a number of things. A, the, the sinister servant of an evil sorcerer. That's a lot of alliteration right there. <laughs> but, or, or, you know, um, a messenger for a greater uh, fiend. Or some sort of twisted tiefling. You know, in some editions, like Pathfinder, not all tieflings look the same. So anyway, this is just a, a really cool little, I think a great minion mini. And look at the size of his skull. He's got a big brain in there, no doubt. Two of my favorite out of the minis I received are kobolds, a kobold inventor and a kobold sorcerer. Uh, you know, kobolds are always great to add to your collection. They're small, they don't take up much room. You could amass an army of them and still be useful especially at higher levels. Throw like a hundred kobolds at your players and see how they do. It'd be fun, either they'll plow through them and feel like superheroes or they'll uh, turn tail and run. Maybe there's an army of kobolds guarding your dragon's lair, but 
So this is a Cobalt Sorcerer. And look at the eyes, look at the teeth, just great detail in the paint job. I love the fire in his hand. And he has these like stitched together wings, a contraption that he's strapped and buckled on. Maybe he uses uh, some sorcerous wind to power his flight or just uses them to glide down from above. The kobold inventor, he's got a basket with a skunk in it. Maybe he uses that as part of his traps that he makes and sets. And he's got some sort of strange pole uh, that he uses. I'm not sure, is that some sort of tail on the end? Either way, this isn't just a great adversary. This could be a great NPC. Somebody, a reoccurring character to vex or aid your player's heroes. What can I say? This one was long overdue. I, I believe WizKids put out the Guard Drake, which was blue, like kind of, you know, of the blue dragon lineage. And now here we have a ambush Drake. And this one is terrific. The, the other one was terrific too, but this one is really great. You could have a bunch of these in your collection and it, they would be useful. Instead of hounds patrolling the area, you've got guard drakes, ambush drakes, the paint job like all in this series and, and really recent series for WizKids have been terrific. The pose is great. And quite frankly, this guy will get a lot of use on my table. Here we have a Thayan Apprentice. And this is a really great miniature. I, I could see this being used as a dignitary from a foreign land, perhaps an ambassador, or even a princeling uh, NPC from an exotic culture. Look at the detail on the robes. Look how great the paint job is. And the gilding along the, the trim and the eyes. A little tattoo on the forehead. And this is just, again, a really, really spectacular NPC mini. I'll probably put this mini in with my special NPC minis. I have a, I have a container filled with special NPCs. Here we have a Goliath fighter with spiked armor fierce expression. I'm really, really impressed lately with the faces on the WizKids minis, the paint jobs. You know, if you go back to some of the earlier ones and the the earlier D&D minis from the 2000, early 2000s, some of the faces, they were just like, you had to imagine a face on there. They were just blah. When you got up close, it didn't hold up to scrutiny. But, but I mean, like, look at this. I'm, I'm pretty close here. Let me try and get a better focus. I'm very close, and that looks detailed. It's really good. The sword is bent, but this is an easy fix, as I've said in past videos. Just dunk them in some boiling water fast, shape the sword, and run them under cold water, and that sword will be uh, will be very stiff. <laughs> we, we've got you covered, little buddy. All right, we have an incubus here, and this guy really reminds me that I have to get back to working out this year has been rough. <laughs> but I mean, like, look at, look at those like fabulous shoulders and abs. I mean, this, this guy is fit as a fiddle. And again, looks like the mini, uh, like the artwork in the, the monster manual. The detail is great. The paint job is great. You know, you could use this as an incubus. You could use this as a tiefling perhaps uh, that somehow has wings, you know, either through level advancement or maybe that's just something you work into your story, but a really great mini. And I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, he's kind of being a, a motivator for me for, the, for, for getting back into working out. Look at this human wizard is terrific for anyone who is looking for a player character wizard to use. I mean, check it out. He's got cool robes, he's young and, and daring, he's, he's holding aloft and wielding magic, uh, a magic stave, or maybe that's a rod that expands into a staff, whatever you want. There, there's even a spell book, look at the detail in there. 
with arcane lore within and and like I've been going on about detail on the face this is a really cool mini to have in your arsenal especially if you are looking for a miniature for your own wizard in play here we have a lizard folk perhaps the best lizard folk mini I have yet to see he's got splashes of color really cool detailed armor he's got a quiver filled with javelins looks like a it could be the quiver could be made of reeds and a bone sword just great detail all around oh what was it where is he now i don't know if you can see right there i'll point on his side there's there's a fish you know a snack for later because raiding the swamps you know really uh builds up your appetite maybe my favorite pull from what whiskit sent me was the skeletal alchemist and this is a mini based on a creature in Ghost of Salt Marsh, and it looks just like the artwork. Check him out. He has a flowing, it could be an arcane beard, a ghostly beard on his skeletal form. He's holding a glass potion bottle of some sort, perhaps a Molotov cocktail uh, enhanced with magic or, or something else. Detailed arcane runes along the trim of his robe you just look at that detail and that paint job and let's let's face it that is an amazing come on focus focus here let's come down here he's got an amazing wizard's hat i love that looks like the sorting hat it's kind of a whimsical and terrifying mini. This one will get plenty of use on my table. What about you? So here we have the Night Walker. And the Night Walker has a clear base. Again, just appreciate for a moment how the clear base allows for you to see through to the terrain, keeping your focus on the mini during your combats and encounters. So. I am not familiar with this creature yet. Now that being said, he's still terrifying. Look at that face. He has necrotic or fiendish power flowing from his body, like purple flames, lots of detail. This guy really is the stuff of nightmares and he looks like one uh, big bad creature to have been summoned by perhaps this guy who you know is the skeletal alchemist but why couldn't he be a lich summoning this fiendish nightmare to face off against your heroes i'm going to be doing a little comparison so here we have the human wizard from the fangs and talons whiz kids miniseries along with an old school DD purple worm from war of the dragon queen which i believe was released in 2006 it is a terrific, spectacular purple worm. It is a huge size base. Still, I mean, very big. I mean, it's very reasonable that this could swallow a person. However, the purple worm should be bigger. And WizKids has come in and solved that with this mini. Look at that. This purple worm could swallow the War of the Dragon Queen's purple worm. So I'm just gonna move this one out of here now and focus on how amazing this premium figure is. A clear base that is mostly taken up with rubble as the worm erupts from the ground. Look at this. Look at the size. Look at the size comparison to a medium-sized mini. Let's do a little spin around here. Filled with these spikes along its body that help propel it along through the tunnels that it bores in the earth. It has, a, look at that, it's curved all the way around. And you could fit a mini in there. You could rig it up to, to stay better. I'm, I'll hold it for a second just so you can see. There, look at that. And if you had, say, 
let's pretend this is a halfling. You could fit a halfling in there. <laughs> so I've really been enjoying the variety in the premium figures. It is so cool and terrifying. I can't wait to unleash this on my players when they least expect it. Lots to love in this series, so make sure that you go to WizKids to pre-order. The link is below, or you could wait and show some love to your favorite brick and mortar store when they are released on November 11th. Uh, in the meantime, like, share, subscribe uh, to my channel, and also make sure to follow me on Instagram for some extra XP. Until the next time, catch you later. Yeah.